On today's show, there was a gigantic fantasy football matchup going on in the office here. We talk about that, and it's championship time. It's waiver time. We play a fantastic game of Trey or Nay. Don't miss it. Subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. Like the video. Enjoy. Hey, Foot Clan, championship time is here. You might have already brought one home or you got your championship game this weekend, and I want to remind you when you win to go to fantasychamps.com, and there's a special promotion. You can go ahead and put the code free ring in, and guess what? Uh, this is going to be shocking. You get a free championship ring but with the purchase. Like, those things are like 60 bucks. Yes, not now anymore. No, they are free. <laughs> That's and, a good deal, uh, man. You can go to fantasychamps.com, put a, put a trophy in the old cart, put a ring in the cart, put in the code free ring, and then you've got some bling to uh, wear on your finger. It'll be your most prized possession. Uh, take off your wedding ring, put on this ring, and yes, you yes, will, yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll have done it correctly this year in 2021. So check it out, fantasychamps.com. And today's show is sponsored by pristineauction.com, the best sports memorabilia site in existence. Here's some items that were recently won, finished the auction at under $100. You got Damian Harris at $67 for a signed jersey. Debo Samuel signed Ooh. jersey, $61. Jalen Waddell, $79. Josh Jacobs, $68. Michael Carter signed jersey, $49. Bucks. Go to pristineauction.com, and when you register, use the code BALLERS, you'll get a $10 credit. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, December 28th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. You have quite the glow about you, young man. <laughs> We're taking care of the elephant in the room? Yeah. Yeah, we this is we ripped the band-aid off here. <laughs> Just like the Dolphins did. <laughs> yeah. They ripped that band-aid off <laughs> real quick. Took two plays. So, yeah, uh, last <laughs> night, Ian Book did. Sometimes, let me put it this way. Sometimes games, they, you expect something. And you get something else. That is the nature of sports. That's why sports betting and DFS can be difficult. That you get surprised. You have the Lions destroying the Cardinals or Houston surprising the Chargers. And then sometimes it goes exactly according to plan. Yes. Sometimes it does. Sometimes sometimes Mike White shows up. Right. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. As the backup to the backup. And he comes out. And you're like, oh, that guy might. Maybe he should actually be the starter. That guy was so good. And then sometimes Ian Book shows up. And I, like, ah, yeah, that, that guy's the backup to the backup. The anticipation for the Al matchup was so great that I watched all the pregame. And I listened to Ooh. these people talk about all of the potential that Ian Book had and the preparation and how this this was not going to be too big for him. And the last thing he wants to do is have big eyes in the huddle and – and then, <laughs> oh man, it was way too Victory! big for him. It was way too big for him. Congratulations, so, Andy, on getting to the championship. Mike, congratulations on getting to the championship. Thank you, Brooks. Congratulations oh, on getting to the championship. Don't do this. Don't My, do this. Myself. Yeah, Jason, congratulations. congratulations. Don't do this. Thank you, Mike. Al. Don't. Better do luck this. next year. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh. Al, is he? So he's still here. Yeah, I'm here. Congratulations, Andy. Andy. I'll be rooting for you. Oh, look at this. Thank oh, you, what buddy. A, what You're a such guy. a big man. Um, no, biggest man in the room. Are you happy well, that I'm, I'm not cool. in studio today? A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. <laughs> we love so you, Al. So, we'll, we'll, uh, look, the, the Miami defense, they did what they had to do. Um, it was a heavyweight fight between me and Al. No cheap wins here, which was kind of, you know, that's always nice to see. You, you spend your whole season, you know, if you get to the playoffs, you have – good performances by good players and you know when when you have a high scoring match you did all you could do and um obviously like i said yesterday i'm much better at fantasy football than al mm. 
And so I came out on top. Yeah, that's, that's true. Well, to, proven. to be fair, Owl almost did everything he could have done. Don't uh, bring this up, no. <laughs> because he, uh, we talked about he didn't have the courage to play Amon Ross St. Brown. And had he done that, I, what what's the threshold there, Owl? I would have won by point four eight, I believe. <laughs> oh, man. I was I was legit rooting for Miami DST to put up one more point oh, last no. night just yes. to make it not matter, but now, it did matter. <laughs> Does it feel better or worse knowing that you scored more than the other two playoff teams on the other side of the bracket? Like you would have beat either yeah, of them. Yeah, I got second place the way I see it. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, turning the page, if we can, to the waiver wire, that's today's show. We're going to, you know, it's it's a different focus for, for many of you. The vast majority, next week is your championship game. Right. Some of you, um, some of you, your championship game will be the following week in week 18. And I'm sorry for you. I'm yeah. sorry because you're going to compound the already crazy COVID year where I'm, you know, I'm going to spend the week checking my phone, making sure my players are still available with the fact that, you know, there'll be players playing half of games and things of that nature in week 18. But we'll be here for you. That's the other headline. That's true. We, we will be here. But also there was there was a football game that happened after the immediate pick six uh, for us to break down. Not a ton here because the Saints side of the ball, it was an absolute disaster. Uh, Alvin Kamara could not overcome the, the situation. He only had two receptions to go with his 13 carries. It was a very blah game for him. The Miami side, I get that the Saints are – they are a very strong defensive unit. They just shut out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But when you have <laughs> – when your defense is dominating the other side like this, I mean, yeah, they, they did end up with 20 points, but going into halftime, it was 10-3 to where the Saints like had the ball bounced the right way for the Saints. They actually could have tied this game up. So, in my opinion, pretty embarrassing uh, for the Miami offense – Miles Gaskin, it's done. Goodbye. It's it's done. Uh, if you had, uh, hopefully you held on to Duke Johnson. We knew that the matchup would be terrible, and you couldn't play him regardless of like, is he actually going to still be the guy after he destroyed the Jets? And it was Duke Johnson and Philip Lindsay. Miles Gaskin had three carries uh, on the night, J and Jalen Waddle continues to be a superstar. He he is their entire offense. Ten receptions, ninety-two yards, and a tutty in this matchup. So the only person who came through Miami defense and Jalen Waddle, other than that, it was massive disappointment. Yeah. In including Devonte Parker, who, yes. If you, oh my God. If you were just looking at a box score, you'd say, Oh, he, he didn't play. Yeah, um, he did, but he didn't get a target, uh, or any involvement. He did not touch the football. So absurd. Um, that was, hopefully you did not have to play Devonte Parker. Could you imagine if all you needed was <sighs> one point? One point from Parker. Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to win. Plays the whole game. I definitely had a different view of, like, I didn't think it was embarrassing for Miami because this is a New Orleans team at home with one of the best defenses that just shut out Tampa Bay. Like, you know, Jalen Water was so impressive to me in that matchup. And obviously, like, Traquan Smith didn't get a target either. So there were lots of players that didn't come through. He did. But... Traquan did exit with a chest injury. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have lit up the stat sheet. No, no, I'm, not, I'm definitely no. <laughs> not saying that. Uh, but no, it was. I mean, Jalen Waddle's legitimate. I mean, this is a yes. This is a year in which you look at Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle and Amon Ross St. Brown and Devontae Smith, and you're having big impacts from rookie wide receivers, and they're delivering on promise. And Jalen Waddle was kicked down dynasty draft sheets. Yes, because he was. it didn't project like a great situation. Yeah, um, and at the time, you know, Will Fuller was a recent signing, and Devontae Parker was there. But, but Jalen Waddle, if you invested in Dynasty, you probably got a value. And don't forget about Elijah Moore, who you know, yeah, this he's injured. He's great. injured now, but he came on hot and looked like a, a superstar. Kadarius Tony. I mean, this is a Rondale really, Moore. really great uh, rookie wide receiver class going mm -hmm. forward. All right, let's move on to where there's smoke, there's fire.
Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. So I think, you know, this week on Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, we are we are all focused on week 17, right? We're looking at, you know, there are so many variables happening in fantasy. You need a lot of spot starts. You need players to have confidence in. And so we, we're bringing you two names that are, are worthy names of can I play them next week. So Tyler Boyd has managed to – Slither into the top 12 despite the attention given both outside wide receivers in Cincinnati. Number nine against Denver in week 15. Last and, and really both weeks were one play, right? Like last yep. week, he has he has managed to do the invisibility cloak where mm-hmm. the defense is focused on those two other players, and then one play in two straight weeks puts up a huge touchdown. Number 12 last week against Baltimore has Kansas City coming up. Now this is smoke for me, but I want to hear what you guys think. I just can't count on one big play against Kansas City despite the last two weeks. Yeah, I, in general, I think I agree with you. Um, the The reality is Tyler Boyd has historically had his value from volume. He's been a guy who gets 10, 12 targets and uh, you know, gathers in eight or nine receptions for – uh, 88 yards and just volumes his way and then these last two weeks has been the broken coverage we snuck you out and the defense forgets that Tyler Boyd is there and it's been awesome however he's been getting downfield shots you know what I mean like he has Mike and I have to play Tyler Boyd yeah in our championship matchup so I really hope there's <laughs> some fire here and I do think that the recipe for that has been seen and is uh, it is a realistic outcome that if Kansas City's focusing on these other weapons that Boyd could get a deep target and come through. Uh, but if I have to, you know, if I have to bet a dollar whether Tyler Boyd has a good game or a bad game this week, I think he has a bad game. Kansas City's... A whole dollar? Yeah. One... Oof, one what about, a, but, but what about a Jimmy? What if you put a Jimmy down cash. on Cash. Oh, we're talking... Yeah, that's the new Benjamin. Um, yeah, no, I would, I would bet against Tyler Boyd. Kansas City defense is just on fire um you know we're going to talk streaming quarterback options burrow just had literally one of the best quarterback performances all time it's gonna be really interesting to see how they stack up uh against the chiefs yeah i i agree here that you got to go with smoke because the targets aren't there six targets and five targets the interesting thing though is the snap percentage where he, two weeks ago against Denver, 87% of the snaps. He hadn't seen a, a a share like that since week two. Not that he's, of course, off the field a ton, but it was interesting to see that go up. And then 91% of the to- of the plays he was out there this past week, like maybe that was just the the plan of attack because they knew that the Baltimore secondary is very susceptible. And also you had a, you know, I know it's the narrative of talking about the defensive coordinator kind of throwing some shade on your quarterback, but they it feels like they really took it personal and decided that uh, the game was done, and then, then they just kept running up the score. They kept throwing. So I, I think that did have an impact on what they wanted to do. But against Kansas City, man, I it that's, that's going to be some – Tough sledding. Yeah, a very, very low floor they're, they're for gonna, Boyd. They're going to try to run the ball. That's what they have wanted to do yes. in neutral game scripts. But last week against a secondary that was depleted for a divisional matchup, wanting to smash you know the throats of your opponent, I, 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 I think that come this week, they want to keep the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. And they're going to see that as Joe Mixon is the way to go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm out on, on Boyd. They want... They won against Pittsburgh 41 to 10, and he was two for 13. So that's your floor. They, even in a game when they, they scored a million points, he, he does have, you know, he's lower priority. He's at least the fourth option in the offense, so there's risk. Michael Carter, Jets running back. I don't know how to feel on this one. I want somebody to tell me because Jacksonville was the opponent last week for the Jets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's And fun. Jacksonville <laughs> and the Jets, when you play against them, there is a, 
there is a mist and it allows a lot of running back points. So you said smoke, Jason. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely smoke if you're talking about this coming week. I, I think Michael Carter is talented. I don't think I think there is fire uh, behind his ability to be a constant fantasy contributor over the next few years. Um, but based on what he did last week, 118 yards on the ground, his value came on the ground. And now he's facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are a very good run defense. Now, they do have the absence of Shaquille Barrett now, uh, who sprained his MCL. So maybe that makes a difference, gives him a little bit of light, a little bit of hope if you have to start Carter. But I would be looking to pivot away from Carter because even though he's very talented in the receiving game, he just hasn't had the work come to him when they've got their first round rookie pick, uh, you know, go going. Zach Wilson has not thrown him the ball. You're three targets, two receptions this last week, better than zero. But like, that's not when Mike White was you know, nine, nine yes. targets, 14 targets. Um, so I think that his opportunity comes on the ground. The matchup is bad on the ground. So I'm looking elsewhere this week against Tampa Bay. I'm going to try to look elsewhere, but the, the thing that is fire is is that the volume is back. You had his first his first game back uh, against the Miami Dolphins two weeks ago. He was only on the field. For, he was less than half of the or fifty percent of the snaps. Ten opportunities. It was a little disappointing to see that that timeshare with I I believe Coleman got a bunch of carries in that game as well. So the volume will be there. The matchup is nasty. But at this point, like we'll be going through some waiver wire running backs. Maybe there's a couple guys. That are well, worth uh, picking up and playing over Carter, but he's he's probably still in your lineup. And uh, I know it's the Jacksonville Jaguars that he had the success against, uh, against, but against fantasy running backs, they actually have been in oh like they've been strong at at shutting them down. You know they're just behind like the Kansas City Chiefs in a, in points per game to the uh, two fantasy running backs. So the Jaguars have been bleeding to quarterbacks and and wide receivers, but not a ton of running backs. Volume versus volume then. Michael Carter against Tampa in week 17. Or Dare Agumbawale. Oh, who, yes. Who will be the starter scored last week against these Jets. Uh, but I believe they have New England. Yes. The, yeah, the J Jacksonville is on the road against the Patriots. I would play Carter by a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it, the Patriots really... Uh, does it for me I, I I think I would go Carter there as well as well but um you know that you talk about waiver wire options or guys who have at least come at, out of being a backup recently you know in the same game Ronald Jones against the Jets on oh, the other side easy. of the field yeah, yeah. It's, it's not even close that was where there's smoke there's fire presented by our friends at Traeger Grills grilling season never ends with Traeger go to Traeger.com slash footballers News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. All right. This is a be a good person check for Mike, the fantasy hitman. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo Always. sustained a UCL tear and fracture in his right thumb uh, during week 16 when Mike, the fantasy hitman, rushed the locker room, grabbed him by the hand. And uh, there's no video evidence that that happened. <clears throat> so. Look, it's very questionable that Jimmy's going to be able to play. Now, I don't know if it's just mm -hmm. me, but I feel like if he can, mm -hmm. they'll find a way to make sure to start him. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, there's a chance that we uh, see yeah. the Lance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Mike's romance uh, gets to take the field in championship week. I, my guy, Trey Lance. <laughs> number one. I mean, not my. To, to be yeah, clear, yeah. not my guy. Yes, yes. You're uh, my no, guy. Number one. Oh, all right. Is this some hopeful Christmas music we're getting? Uh, I, number, it was called Love Letter, and I thought okay. it was appropriate. Uh, number one, Jimmy Garoppolo, rest up, my man. I need you to get traded to uh, – I need you to be healthy when you're traded over to Washington so you can uh, bail out my boy Terry McLaurin. But S San Francisco, you spent the third round p – uh, the number three overall pick. You traded your entire future, and you're playing against the Houston Texans. How do you not – Put the rookie in and see what he has for you moving forward for next year. You're probably out of the playoffs. I get that some I think some things can bounce the right way for you. But this is 
This is the Christmas fantasy miracle if your quarterback is is limping into the the fantasy championship because a Trey Lance to me against the Texans is a very strong fantasy quarterback play. Yeah, but this could be really bad news for um, most people in the championship it, game because I could. think it's it's far more likely that people in the championship game are relying on someone like Debo Samuel or even George Kittle. Um, yes. Then yes. they are looking to pivot to a waiver wire championship week quarterback. And, you know, it, and, and really the, it's bad news either way, right? You either have Jimmy Garoppolo with a broken thumb on his throwing hand. Um, that sounds way worse to me. If he is started, <laughs> if he is, <laughs> how bad is Trey Lance? What did he do at practice? Like, if they're going to say, yeah, I think we have a better shot of winning with a quarterback with a broken hand they're in division with Russell Wilson they I, see how it goes with a broken finger on your throwing hand I'm not trying to just be contrarian like Trey Lance is an absolute option this week but Houston is not what you think they are for quarterbacks they shut down I mean Justin Herbert was a disaster last week you go look at how they played and we've seen Trey Lance one time with 100% of the snaps he was the 20th quarterback on the week so he is far from a guarantee at the quarterback position this week because it's just not the matchup that you think it is with Houston against fantasy quarterbacks. Oh, but what if? Man, if oh, Mike, Mike if he comes if. out and just dominates I, your I, Joe Burrow into Trey Lance, you will ascend. I will be very happy. And he was the he was the twentieth quarterback, you're right. But he ran the ball sixteen times for eighty nine yards. And if you remember, was just like a fraction away from getting that rushing touchdown in it because that was the game against the Cardinals. He got stonewalled right at the goal line. And if he if that ball goes in, like he's he was well within the top 12. So I think that I think that he is in as a uh, the streaming option of the week. I'm not starting him over everybody. I'm not saying that. Yeah, but uh, you're not going to start him over Justin Herbert against Denver, right? That's a good question. On this Tuesday afternoon, I cannot, I cannot fully answer that question as uh, Herbert will be without Mike Williams and uh, Guyton. Correct? correct. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of those things where I don't think I have the cojones to do it. It is a it is a heart of stone intentional if, if fortitude Lance, move for sure. If Trey Lance had come out in his one start earlier this year or had more opportunities. Like you want to ask why Trey Lance hasn't been given an opportunity. Imagine Jacksonville has Jimmy Garoppolo and they're in the playoff hunt. You tell me Jimmy Garoppolo is not on the field over Trevor Lawrence. Sure. I, I understand why he hasn't played yet. Clyde Edwards, Alaire diagnosed with a bruised shoulder week to week for Clyde. That's good news for the player. Uh, I imagine he'll be out this week. Though. Agreed. So Daryl Williams looks I mean, Daryl, when he's on the field, gets the ball thrown to him. Yes, he and does. So, and so there, that is a really exciting opportunity for the fantasy championship. And Derek Gore, um, you know, in deeper, That's more true. desperate That's situations, true. he looks great. He, he just He's such a good runner. He had the ball thrown to him last week as well. Yeah, I think he caught a, like a 50-yarder or so, something like that when a, when a play broke down. But, um, yeah, we'll talk about him in the waiver wire pickups as well. Uh, other news, I'll get through this quickly. Sean McVay, um, Daryl Henderson's been put on IR. He said that Cam Akers has a chance to return to action on Sunday. I want to be very clear about this because I saw people on social media when, first of all, amazing, amazing yes. for Cam Akers. Second of all, the play is Sonny Michelle, yes. and a lot of people instantly reacted to like, like I even got a text, like I have Cam Akers in my IR on, in our league of record. And it was like, oh, are we playing him now that Henderson's out? No. Nope. And I, you can see Mike on the camera here shaking no his head. It's a huge no way. You don't – like Cam Akers could see zero carries. Uh, remember, Daryl Henderson was active the last two weeks and saw like a, a touch or two, you know. And so Cam may get a chance to contribute, but there's just no way as a fantasy player you can rely on him. No, that it would be – like the floor is is zero. They're not the his first game back. 
<laughs> off of the Achilles injury, it's not right into a featured running back role. That's not happening. Yeah, if he's active um, for this game and the line was set at five and a half touches, I would I would take the under. I would guess that he comes yep. in, gets the ball a couple of times, and tries to leave the field healthy. That's that's his goal. And now Sony will win championships. Yes, which he will, will be the extra salt in the wound of Al. <laughs> um, Miles Sanders ruled out for week 17. Jordan Howard could play. It's going to be very interesting for fantasy, and we'll follow it through the week, uh, as to what options you have on a run-focused Eagles team where you saw Boston Scott get into the end zone last week, but Jordan Howard get carries. And um, Where are you guys at briefly on that backfield? It's a really... Tough situation because Jordan Howard had the stinger. Um, we'll see how he recovers. If you remember, uh, you know your your fantasy football history. Jordan Howard, this was uh, when he had the uh, stinger back. Was it twenty nineteen? Yeah, twenty nineteen. So he had the stinger, and it was like, oh, Jordan Howard. That happens to football players all the time. They leave. Sometimes they even come back in game, or they miss a game, and the dude missed six weeks. And it seemed like he was going to get shut down for the season. And, and even in the final game, he didn't touch the ball. So that is the concern that that's somehow these injuries could be related. If Jordan Howard were healthy, I think he would be the guy. He's been playing uh, in front of Boston Scott. But at this point, when, when waivers are going, I think that both are worth a, a pickup, but uh, but we need more news to know who's going to be the starter. Yeah, I mean, it, we do need more news. I assume right now that Jordan Howard will not play. Okay. Uh, so I'm I'm uh, pretty high on Boston Scott this week. I think he'll be a great play. Um, and then we can't forget Kenny Gainwell. Sure. Uh, if, uh, if Jordan Howard is ruled out as the week goes on, then Kenneth Gainwell will be involved as well. And uh, the matchup is a middle-of-the-road matchup, but the Eagles have been running the ball very, very well. All right, um, Darren Waller may take part in some practice. If he is back, you know, you have a team with the Raiders that need targets and are in a playoff push. They're 8-7. and seven. He's back in your lineup, I assume? And yeah. he's got such a good he matchup. The Colts okay. are, are great to play tight ends against. We don't have any sound effects for the COVID update of the day, but uh, Austin Eckler, Jared Goff, Allen Robinson, Kareem Hunt, and Brashad Perryman are all removed from the COVID list. Yay! Now, yeah. I, I mean, is it is it significant that Travis Kelsey's name's not there yet? You know, when, when it was down to the wire? We'll it's have to find out. Um, you you heard Andy Reid say he's um, – it's it's hopeful that he'll be off. But, again, you got to pay attention to that. And um, same with Dalvin Cook through the week. Mike Evans, David Johnson, Julio Jones, Josh Reynolds, Dan Arnold added to the list. Hmm. Mm. Do, 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 yeah. 2021. And, and that's just Tuesday. There will be more. <laughs> we, that's uh, just Tuesday with COVID. We know that there will be more. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app, join the breaking alerts channel faster than every other source. Before we jump into the waivers, want to thank today's sponsor, Head and Shoulders. Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. It's never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Head and shoulder scalp shield that works day and night, Jason, to protect you against flakes. Even even those with, uh, you know, not the bountiful head of hair, yeah, Jason. I, mean, I, still got, I still got hair. But you don't want to have dandruff. No, I want to have head and shoulders. <laughs> That's right. They are never not working with that scalp shield technology. They've been a partner all season long. Actually, for many seasons, we are uh, big fans of Head and Shoulders, and we've been giving you the Never Not Working segment. What is it going to be this week? Stay I can't. Tuned. I can't tell you right now because then uh, it would give secrets of how much we're never not working. And honestly, never, never, never not working. That's what we do at the oh, Fantasy man. Footballers Headquarters. Try and figure out that puzzle. Uh, but thank you to Head and Shoulders for sponsoring this show. We will uh, be jumping into that segment on Thursday. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never not working with Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com.
And we want to thank IP Vanish. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. And a VPN is an important tool that will help you safely browse the internet. It's going to secure and encrypt your data. You could put it on your computers, your phones, your tablets. Make sure that when you're connecting to public Wi-Fi or uh, anywhere, really. I mean, it, your your data is your own business, and if you want to protect it, make sure that uh, make sure the man isn't watching you. You see, uh, oh yeah, all the ads. They're not not Debo. We're not talking about. Oh no no, not, not talking Debo. about. We're talking about the man. The man. <laughs> uh, keep him out of your you know browsing data, and I you know IP Vanish takes care of you. They've got twenty four seven support. Available by email, chat, telephone is very easy to use. You turn it on with a click of a button. You can turn it on and off very, very easily. You can go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to claim a 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off the usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online today. Put me in, coach. If you want a silver lining on this defeat, Al, you we have discovered a wide and vast array of depressed owl gifts. The amount of gifts coming through yeah. has been very impressive. I didn't know these exist. I didn't know owls got depressed, but clearly they do. And there's a lot of them. I've yes, seen them do. in the cold. You do? You do? <laughs> we do. That's because they're so wise, man. Like um, most, most birds are just like, <laughs> give me some bird seed. But owls are like deep thinkers. It's a heavy oh, burden yeah. to carry. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, the, I, your loss? Just the wisdom, the losses. <laughs> the wisdom, the knowledge of the loss. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, I was browsing Twitter while you guys were reading the ads, and um, I saw your most recent tweet, Al, that said, you know, I woke up this morning with a clear head and enough focus to say that I officially hate fantasy football, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. really, that is the essence of fantasy football. If you can't, if you can't hate something, then you can't love something. Oh, right? yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. There, fine line. There must be balance. I hate it, and I can't wait till draft day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, wide receiver waiver discussion at hand. It's time to talk about week 17, and it's time to talk about options that you can put into your lineup. Maybe you need one right now, and maybe you will need one later in the week. So preparation is key, and... Where are we at with the main waiver wire pick pickups well, at wide receiver? There are a couple of guys that you just need to at least check, make sure that they are rostered. They're probably rostered in your leagues, but if they're not, they're, they're smash pickups. And honestly, one of them is Amon Ross St. Brown. If you played him, you're probably in the championship because mm -hmm. he's been great. Um, I personally know someone that would have been in the championship if they played him. Um, but Amon Ross St. Brown, he's got a good matchup against Seattle. And then the other one is superstar i believe hall of fame wide receiver oh yeah he'll be and you think he will be Anyways, antonio different different conversation oh, what i definitely think he will be but, oh um i didn't know that was like there were people who th who feel like he wouldn't be. sometimes when you're crazy it counts against you and he crazy i'm talking about antonio brown he does some interesting uh, things wide, wide receiver for the tampa bay buccaneers now um but he was he was the dude this last week and he will um, be the dude again yes so if if they are available check grab them, play them. And then the All other right. guys we're looking at, um, Isaiah McKenzie for the Buffalo Bills. He is a very interesting name because he is available everywhere. Uh, he had a fantastic game against the New England Patriots, which is not an easy thing to do. He went right into the slot role, and you have uh, uh, Gabe Davis and Cole Beasley, who I I, I can't say with 100% certainty they'll be out, but it seems like they, they will be out. They are... Uh, part of the, the non-vaccinated protocol. So I think that the timeline hits that they're going to miss. And the matchup with the Atlanta Falcons here is it's sensational for for all wide receivers. And if you're a starting wide receiver for Josh Allen, you have a, uh, an opportunity. I'm curious where you guys are with, uh, with Isaiah McKenzie versus Manny Sanders. Andy, is there 
is there any chance that you're like you got Sanders on your bench? You would just you've held on through all the the lows. Would you make the swap to McKenzie or would you go put Sanders out there? Oh, I would definitely play McKenzie. Yeah, I okay. mean, I think we saw enough last week where like Emmanuel Sanders hasn't done anything since the beginning of the year, and and you're talking about a player that is uh, an elder statesman. Yes. You know, he dropped the touchdown last week. I will say that. I mean, he had an end zone target that he just plain old dropped. It's because it's because of his old hands. My they're, my they're biggest frail. concern is that it might be too easy against Atlanta. Like I was looking at Matt Ryan's box scores, and this is not it's not a good picture, man. Don't eat before you do that. Like he can't put up numbers and Buffalo's defense is just you know, do, do, well, they need 12 targets to Isaiah McKenzie. That is my biggest concern. But I look 11 for 125 and one is not something to ignore. Yeah. And, and not only that, but I want to remind you, uh, a lot of people are not aware what Isaiah McKenzie did last year because he did it in week 17. He did it when Ooh. a lot of uh, fantasy players had checked out and their championship was over. You sound like you're never not working, Jason. Oh, I'm never Imp impressive. Not <laughs> working. But the reality is that was the only game last year that Cole Beasley missed. So we have two games in the last two years where Cole Beasley missed. This last week, he was 11 for 125 and 1. And last year, he got 91% of the snaps, nine targets, 65 yards, and two touchdowns. He was the wide receiver six. So when Cole Beasley's gone, he comes in, and that was a game where they beat Miami by 30 points. So you talk about maybe you don't need him, but he's going to he's gonna man that role, and he's a little itty-bitty guy. You, I don't think he could do this for a season, but he could do this for two weeks. I like Isaiah McKenzie. I think you could pick him up and start him even in your championship. It's scary to start a guy who's available in 100% of leagues. Um, but I I do think he is a realistic option for – I mean, they're every, every single league, you're going to have the championship game where you are missing a COVID player. You're, you're, yes. Someone in that championship game is going to last a minute go, oh, no, I can't believe I lost this player. He's a name that's out there. Yeah, yeah I think I, that, that's a, it's a good waiver note here. This is just strategy of you may look at your team right now, I, I don't need the waiver show. My roster is so awesome. <laughs> no, you you need to be adding these players who are great starters. If you talk to yourself that way, that's a little creepy, though. Well, you got to have self-confidence, man. If, if, if you can't love yourself, who's going to love that you? That sounded a little blues cluesy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but my point is you should – your strategy this week should certainly be a bunch of players are going to go on the COVID list. They might be players on my team, and come Saturday morning, I might be scrambling, saying, oh, crap, now I need a player for tomorrow morning. So you need to be adding these players. Do not drop your backup running backs. Need to have them. And if you do have the spot, some of these running backs we're going to be talking about, like backup running backs for your opponents, specifically your opponent in the championship round, I'm targeting those players as well. They, this is a... This is the wild west of fantasy football where there's like the, the the laws are gone. There's no rules right now uh because covid has taken over. There's a new sheriff in town and unfortunately it's a virus that that does not care about your feelings. So oh, you no. need when you, you duel shoot first, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look, shoot at 8. 10, ten paces? No. No, eight man. Paces. 8 paces and shoot because when it's all over you're alive. Okay, it's yes. kill or be killed. Yes. Oh my god. Championship week. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. not. It ain't a lie. Um, <laughs> it's it's been tough. It's tough in the streets. You got to do your preparation now. Just load your bench up so that you can pivot without panic. I yes. mean, that's that's the goal is be able to pivot. And um, there there are other players too at the wide receiver position, like. Alan Lazard was was a drop away from a two touchdown game last week. Now we don't know if MVS will be back against Minnesota, but that Minnesota game is likely to be somewhat competitive, Div divisional game, a lot on the line, you know. And so KJ Osborne enters the contention there as well. I'm not as excited yes. about him as I personally am about Lazard and Josh Palmer. It, Mike Williams is gone for another week, so mm -hmm. Josh Palmer had six targets, five for 43 and a touchdown. Had another end zone target. Um. Look, they they couldn't pass the ball well, but Austin Eckler coming back is going to help the offense. They need to get the ball down the field, and Josh Palmer can catch 
Uh, he's definitely got a shot at a touchdown. You saw Keenan Allen did nothing last week. So I think that those are guys that you can put on your bench and at least have pivots. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I do. I wonder, you know, obviously the offense is better with Austin Eckler, but I do wonder with those targets whether Josh Palmer will, you know. Oh, Jackson got so many of them, I'm not concerned. Like yeah, there, there wasn't a complete nine absence or whatever. Yeah. Of, of targets to the running back position. Um, and then, you know, uh, the one thing with Alan Lazard and, and MVS that I will say, and we'll talk about this a lot, I'm sure, as the week goes on, this is the Sunday night football game. It kicks off at 8.20 their time, and the current expectation for temperature is two. Two degrees. <laughs> um, that is 30 oh, back, degrees. Dalvin. That come is back, Dalvin. 30 degrees <laughs> below freezing. I mean, that is... That oh. is insanity, and I've been doing a lot of deep dive over here on, um, you know, because it matters uh, a lot this week. Yep. Um, and there's been about 10 games, including playoff games in, you know, modern history that have been that, that temperature. 80% of them are below 45 total points. Um, there have been a couple, two games that had monster points scored. So this is not um, – it's not impossible that Green Bay and Minnesota have a barn burner. I mean, on paper, I like the fantasy assets, but we should be aware of that temperature, which um, can affect the passing game when it's <clears> – cold games don't matter. Wind is what matters, and it doesn't project to be windy. But this isn't cold. This is freezing. This is – they're going to be throwing an ice cube, um, you know, out there – your their sweat is going to be turning to ice on their skin, so um, it it could have an effect. And when I'm looking at the waiver options, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about everything this week. Laquan Tedwell, five for fifty every week. Is that the That's expectation? What, whoa, 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 four, sir, four for fifty. Uh, um, Laquan Treadwell has been consistent. If you're in a full PPR, he's been getting you about ten points. But he's got New England this week. I don't think I want to um, dance with the devil of Bill Belichick uh, against a rookie quarterback. No, thank you. Zay Jones. I would much rather – I'd play Zay Jones over Treadwell. Yeah, even even with Darren Waller um, coming back, Zay Jones has been involved. And the nice thing is – so he had six for 50, very Laquan Treadwell line this last week. But Zay Jones also has the ability to go get a deep – pass mm -hmm. um and so i if i had to play one of them this week it would be zay jones all right um running backs you guys want to talk about options at running back yes did, the the top option what were you say uh, the last the last name i don't did we bring up kj osborne yeah it just in passing okay. but do you want to talk about yeah him? i mean I, I like alan lazard mark uh, mvs in that same game um i would rather go with kj osborne because okay. Um, I don't expect Adam Thielen to be out there, even if he's out there. I mean, we, we saw it this last week. So I think K.J. Osborne, who is available um, widely, is as good a play as any one of these other. And I, I'd probably put him um, second or third here uh, on my priority list. All right. At the running back position, I get it. Not in your league, but you need to go and look. Um, Ronald Jones will be a championship winning running back. I feel very confident about that because he's the starter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he plays against the New York Jets. Uh, I get it. Not in your league, but just make sure. Because you have to check. You have. I, yes. Go ahead, Andy. Sorry. I, I just wanted to ask the question because you're right, right? They're playing the Jets. But this game has the Dallas recipe written all over it. And when I look at that and I say, okay, you've got Derek Gore, right? He's going to be kind of the second man behind Daryl Williams. And then you look at what Keyshawn Vaughn did with the big play last week and the fact that Ronald Jones is like throwing the ball to, you know, a person without hands. And do they want to get Keyshawn Vaughn more work? And would you play Keyshawn Vaughn in a matchup against a team where, look, we've seen people go in and have multiple running backs disintegrate the Jets' run defense versus a Derek Gore pivot option? Like, is Keyshawn Vaughn in play for you in any situation? Yeah, he is. In, in deeper leagues, if perhaps you're in a double flex situation, then I would be I'd be willing to look at Keyshawn Vaughn. It's the, rare this year to have only one running back beat up on the Jets. Like it's <laughs> happened a couple times, but for the most part, teams just go. Everybody has a great game against the Jets. I, I think Vaughn is in play. Obviously, Ronald Jones is going to be 
you know, the the he's going to get seventy five percent of the workload, um, and he will dominate. Uh, Ronald Jones is a smash play, but yeah, Vaughn. 36% you know, of snaps last week for Vaughn, 52% for Ronald Jones. So I just, with the matchup, I think he's worth mentioning. Yeah, Certainly. absolutely. Yeah, but but uh, not just the snaps. So it was eight opportunities for Vaughn and 23 for Ronald Jones. He's in a great spot. But So with the interest in Keyshawn Vaughn, would you be spend, taking your priority here this week and going for Boston Scott, who has the matchup against Washington, you're kind of making some weekend projections ahead of time like we already talked about with Jordan Howard. But, Jason, would you go after Boston Scott or would you go after Vaughn? I, I would go after Boston Scott over Me Keyshawn too. Vaughn. I okay. think that the, the volume will be there. I, I, I would play Boston Scott over Keyshawn Vaughn if Jordan Howard is active. Um, so okay. either way, right. um, Boston Scott, I think, is a very good pickup. He would be my first priority of the running backs who are – most likely available in your leagues or or you know at least more available than 50 percent of leagues i think jordan howard's off my board really I, I, I agree yeah i don't i don't have interest in him like i'm playing boston scott over him even if he's active and jordan how because you know you're dealing with an injury they like boston scott they gave him the goal line carry in this game i just like boston scott just finds a way onto this show every few weeks and so I don't have as much confidence. And Jason, you said you agree with that. I just worry about the stinger. Um, yeah, me you know, too. Mike brought up the history. It's just one of those things where in my championship week, if I started, if if I didn't start Jordan Howard and he ends up getting a touchdown and a fine fantasy day, I can live with myself. If I started Jordan Howard, knowing his history with the stinger and that he's got the injury and he's active, and then he goes out and plays a couple snaps and ends up out of the game I I just couldn't handle that. So he's he is off my board. I uh if you want guaranteed touches and I that's it. Oh, uh Daria Gumbo uh, Yeah, sexy <laughs> Rexy of course. Well, yeah, we should bring him up first. But I was going to bring up Daria Gumbawale, but Rex Burkhead last week was great. They're going to give him 20 touches in the game against San Francisco. So, you know, that vaults him to I, I'd go Daryl Williams. I, well, obviously Ronald Jones, but he's not going to be there. And then I'd go Daryl Williams, but he's not going to be there. Like, how is Rex Burkhead not the next man up on that list of starts? The uh, the the counter argument for Rex Burkhead would be 19 opportunities against the Jacksonville Jaguars, turning into the running back 46. Like nothing. The thing that changed for uh. Uh, for Burkhead against Jacksonville and the Chargers is that the Chargers' run defense is, is atrocious. Atrocious, yes. It, they are just it, terrible. That way, and we've been we've been targeting them all year with our fantasy running backs. <clears throat> the question is, if it's and this is projecting again a little bit of the game script. If it is Trey Lance, which I think it will be, do you think this is more of a competitive game? Because you will need a competitive game in some fashion to make sure that Rex Burkhead is still receiving all these opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that even with Jimmy Garoppolo, the San Francisco 49ers want to run the ball a ton. But with Trey Lance, it will be even, you know, Trey Lance could finish the game with, you know, 15 passing attempts. Um and so that slows the game down. Uh, time of possession goes in favor of the San Francisco 49ers. They are a top 12 run defense uh, for fantasy purposes. So, yeah, it might be a little closer with Trey Lance as far as score, but it also might be a slower offense. Um, and so, I don't know. Re Rex Burkhead, the volume will be there. Is not a, you know, this this 49ers are top 12, but they're not like, they're not one of those defenses that just terrifies me. Um, so he is in play with David Johnson going on the reserve COVID-19 list on Monday. Um, but I would rather play Boston Scott if Jordan Howard were out over Rex Burkhead. And th okay. those two are really close to me because um, neither guy's a superstar. Both guys can get it done. Both matchups are not the best, but not terrible. Um, can I bring up another player? At running back that I don't see on this list. Please. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Elijah Mitchell this week. And okay. Houston just, you know, they, they won against the Chargers, but you saw Justin Jackson go absolutely crazy. Um, 
is what's Jeff Wilson's roster percentage right now? And, you know, if, if Elijah somehow got dropped by people that were into the playoffs and like the running game for San Francisco in general should be monitored because Shanahan came out and said, look, I think Elijah has a chance this week. He's made progress. He had a decent day yesterday, but he's not out of the woods. So it's like the platforms are choosing not to project Jeff Wilson as the starter right now, but do doesn't it seem like he's got a chance and he's, he's rostered about the same amount as Daryl Williams. Yeah. yeah. He's oh, so over on, uh, on our friends at sleeper, he's at 63% over on Yahoo. He's at 70%. So he's one of those guys. He's probably not there. Uh, was, was uh, our assumption making the waiver doc. But yeah, if if Jeff it is good to at least mention his name. Look for Jeff Wilson uh just in case. And and Elijah. Um like Andy said, he he very well could have been dropped in a league here or there and if he's act whoever the starter is and if Elijah is active, I would I would play Elijah without hesitation um in this matchup. I mean, I I would love to play Elijah or Jeff Wilson, whoever the starter is in this matchup. So he's another another name just like we said with Ronald Jones. You must go and look at your waiver wire. Just check, see if they're there. Play keep away. You know, if this is your championship week, you don't need anyone on your bench that is for next week or for the few. this is right. the the only thing that matters is keeping your opponent away from these guys and having these guys if if necessary. And according to the rules of football, the Jacksonville Jaguars do have to possess the ball um, in alternating with the Patriots. So I know it's ugly. I know it, it's it's difficult, but much, much like the Rex Burkhead situation, Agumba Wale could have – you know, six targets, seven targets, 15 carries. They may be ugly. Like we've seen Dontrell Hilliard have a big game against the New England Patriots. So uh, am I projecting monstrous things from Daria Gumbawale? No, but there's a reason you would have still played James Robinson in mm -hmm. this game. And so, or, or even, you know, the reason people play Carlos Hyde in certain games when Robinson was out, like it shouldn't be completely ignored. I agree. Yeah, I, so. I think he finishes the week probably as an RB3, which, um, you know, I, I feel like he's more secure of being, you know, not the running back 50 than most players out there. But I also, I don't see a massive ceiling, which is the worry in championship Ke week. But Keyshawn I, Vaughn or Agumbo Ole. Oh, that's, that's good. Let's say I think it's I would, an even projection matchup. You're, you're yeah. even with your opponent. I, I'm going to take my shot at a, Higher ceiling, and I, I think that that is Keyshawn Vaughn. Crazy. I'd, I would take the volume of a Goomba Wale. Yeah. All right, there you go. That that's illustrates the situation, and you both contextualized it, which is a big part of it. If, you have, if you're an underdog, uh, a Goomba Wale is not likely to be somebody that puts you, brings you back in the matchup. So um, tight end options, people are going to need them as well. We just saw last week. You can seem like you are on your path to victory, and then Travis Kelsey gets taken away from you. And then I, you know, you guys pivoted to Jimmy Graham in a dynasty league, which is, was so hilarious to me that that was your best option. And he scored. It's a but dynasty league, man. <laughs> I know. I know. But still, that is like the, in a dynasty league, you still generally have somebody else and you, and you still didn't. And Jimmy still scored. So, um, you might need a start. So when you look at the, the muddled you know, like Gerald Everett last week. He ends up with five targets, four for 68 and a touchdown. Somehow Ger a part of this offense. Gerald Everett is the name I would, I would bring up because he, he's been a part of the offense, obviously since Russ has had the, the finger issue, he's um, been a little bit more involved, but it's combined with the matchup Detroit, especially recently um, has been a really good matchup for tight ends. And so the combo there, this is a guy who's on your waivers, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's likely he goes out there and gets you a sub six fantasy points, you know, and just completely submarines you. And then there is the, the opportunity because of the matchup that he gets another touchdown like last week where he was the tight end three. He is on an every other touchdown scoring yes. schedule, Jason. Yeah, I, I, I realize hate to that. bring up that, but that's uh that's the type of analysis people come to our show for. Yes. If that trend continues, he's not going to get one. Yeah, if he goes four for 60 like he did <laughs> on his last touchdownless game, 
you know, you, when you're when you're looking at the waivers for tight ends. So you do you feel more secure in in uh, Gerald Everett than Cole Komet? I, I like Komet I, more. I, I I would play Komet. I think the baseline is like one point higher for Komet because he's really been involved, more targets, more yardage, but he just doesn't score. It's it's Jimmy Grandpa's zone when you get down into the the red zone. Uh, you know, like doesn't score touchdowns. So I would rather go with Everett in the sense that like. I think their floors are both near enough, and the touchdown is likelier to go to Everett. Um, Tyler Conklin plays Sunday night in the freezing cold, probably want to avoid it, Tyler you, Conklin roulette game. You probably do. Like I I prefer Cole Komet uh, to Conklin, but Adam Thielen is out. so And that turned into five targets, four for 44 this past week for Conklin. He's, he well, is, Thielen played this past week sort of Adam Thielen was in and out of the game. That was my point of, of uh, Adam Thielen played on 37% of the snaps. So it turned I, into opportunity for Conklin. Yeah. And I, I get it. I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't, I, I Conklin showed that he without Thielen for, you know, one for seven and two for 20. And like, I, like I'd probably play somebody that I thought had a, bigger opportunity like green bay's defense is too good for me like commit for sure okay. everett for sure foster um, moreau if if waller yeah, was out I, I think i would even take that chance too he said i would i mean he's been a top 10 would, guy yes. two weeks in a row yeah 65 plus yards in the last two games and obviously entirely based on waller and and really i i don't think i would take the shot as a normal fantasy manager of picking up foster moreau um, unless I was the Waller manager, but if I if I was, I'd be happy to pick him up, knowing I've got I've got some secure points here. I want to talk about defensive options this week, and I want to do it with a reminder or an alert to fantasy players, which is this is who looks like a nice start right now, but when COVID knocks a player out later in the week, it changes everything, and so very late in the week, we got the word Taysom Hills out. And so suddenly Miami on Monday Night Football started to look juicy. And so there are matchups that we won't mention today where if the starting quarterback or a very important offensive piece goes out in these games, you might need to look quickly at the waiver wire. Chicago plays the Giants. Yep, that's that's where I'm going. I will take on the New York Giants. I will take on uh, whoever, whatever quarterback they choose to go with. They can't score. They can't. The over the last month, they are it's a it's a top twelve defense against them every single week here uh, against the Giants since they've had to move away from Daniel Jones and you're talking and with huge upside as well over the past two weeks. Dallas was number three, Philly was number four, Chicago at home against either Fromm or Glennon. That's that's a great spot. Other options, uh, Carolina is a good defense in general, and they take on New Orleans. New Orleans has not scored a touchdown in two weeks. Oh, man. Please, if, I mean, if you can learn anything from Andy, if if uh, Taysom is not back. <laughs> uh, I think there's a chance Taysom is not back. I mean, I, I, I heard anecdotally that he, I mean, before he went out, he was not feeling well. So this was not an ASIM test. This was like symptomatic yeah. and if he's if he's sick and not back I mean I would I would play Carolina over everyone if you know if, if it's Ian book yeah if it's Ian book I, well, mean, I mean it's it's not just Taysom though like Trevor Simeon is still around I, I believe true. he was that's he true. was on the COVID list as well which is why book had to play so one of those guys the probability is one of them makes it back sure yeah. I think Carolina is great either way sure. I really do um, Cleveland takes on Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a tough to watch offense right now. Um, I think Cleveland's an option. The Colts take on the Raiders. That one's sneaky good because the Raiders are winning, but they're winning by like 17, 14 and very low scoring games. Um, and I assuming the Colts get defensive pieces back like, Lynn. right. Yeah. And I don't know that they're available to be picked up. Um, many places or or not but the other side of that Carolina game the Saints uh have a great defense and Carolina has a uh I'll great to, <laughs> great to play against <laughs> offense so yeah, yeah I mean I would I would love to play the Saints all right let's talk quarterbacks 
full stream ahead. All right, I want I want to play a game for the for the streaming quarterback section. Okay, okay? let's go. And I'm going to call it Trey or Nay. All right, <laughs> you want the drop? Uh, no, it's not that it's not that good of a game. Um, All right, <laughs> but but I think that the big question mark here is this isn't like regular season where we're each going to bring you you know uh, one player and you know everybody in the championship game is going to be streaming and look this is really a matter of Trey Lance represents a ceiling to me he he represents the fact that you could go out and without question Tyler Huntley was the number one quarterback two weeks ago. And he did it because he scored twice on the ground. He threw two touchdowns. He ran for 70-plus yards. That is the template for Trey Lance coming in against Houston and playing quarterback. So the ceiling is legitimately the number one quarterback on the week. That is the truth. And this is coming from somebody who you know, brought up the, the, the negative parts of Trey Lance, which right. was finishing 20th against Arizona and not being able to find his way on the field despite the seemingly hatred of Jimmy G by everybody in San Francisco. So the ceiling is number one. So Trey or Nay, Trey Lance or Kirk Cousins in Green Bay at <laughs> Trey, two degrees. Trey Lance. <laughs> it's funny that you went straight to there because that is – I'm looking at, at all the matchups, and that was the one that I think is the most difficult matchup because I would I would definitely go Kirk Cousins, um, but the weather scares me a little bit. Um so I, I I think I I think I would go Trey Lance because Trey of the, Lance. the freezing frigid temperatures. I think I would too because I think Trey can give you the mediocrity, um, very easily with the running game, and then maybe as a ceiling. All right, Trey or Nay. Carson Wentz in a matchup with the Las Vegas Raiders. Trey, Trey, yeah, it's Trey for me too. Trey Lance or Tua Tungavailoa against Tennessee? Trey. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to go with the upside. I uh, I, I bought into Tua. Tua many times? No, because <laughs> I, I, once. I, I don't want to buy in <laughs> twice. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll go Trey there. But it oh. is a pretty good matchup for Tua against Tennessee. Okay, um, Trey Lance or Justin Herbert against a very solid Denver defense with Man. no Mike Williams. Uh, it's uh, it's Justin Herbert. Yeah, that's that's there's my answer no, too. There's yeah. no chance I, I will, would. I will say on Tuesday I do lean Justin Herbert, but by the by game time it could be Trey Lance for me. But as of now, it is Herbert. How about yeah, Her Herbert has shown inability to have. Very good games in seemingly bad matchups. He was number six yeah. overall in Denver. So it's very nice that they're at home. They don't have to go to mile high. But he was uh, 28 for 44 for 303 and two against this defense already this year. So I do lean that way. Go I, ahead, Jay. My hardest decision here, just as we're spitballing, trying to absorb the information, it's Kyler Murray against the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Do you, play, do you do that with no Hopkins? And Kyler has been for fantasy football or do you go with Trey Lance against the Houston Texans man that is that is because I think oh it's Trey gosh. Lance for me that see that is that's a cur uh, greater and there is some courage there is courage involved there I get it, it, it it's crazy because like the Kyler game at home this past week if he doesn't have that huge run like it, it's just an awful game and yep. and so and he hasn't been running and it was like they had three design runs in this game and that one just like how often does Kyler break through the middle of the field? That's just not something he does. So, and Dallas's defense has just been so good. so good. I mean, that is That's and brutal. without Hopkins, the Cardinals have been struggling tremendously. And obviously, AJ Green sucks. So, um, <laughs> man, I don't I, know if I have the courage. I, I don't. Mean, I get it on paper. I, it's at least okay. So we can give this advice if you have if Kyler is your guy, at least pick him up. Yeah, sure. So that you have the option. Yes, I would pick Sunday. up. I would pick up. Lance I think I'd stick with Kyler, but to I, torture myself <laughs> through the week. I think I'd pick up Kyler, but I. Uh, yeah, There's, I know. Isn't that funny that you could, if you don't pick him up, then you don't torture yourself. You lock yourself in. There are two other. Then your opponent can get him. Two other quarterback names that I I find interesting. All right, Trey or Nay, let's hear it. Trey or Nay, 
Russell oh, Wilson. Trey. Get out of my life, Russell Wilson. Against Detroit. Get out of my life. The Lions. No. no. Russell Wilson. No. I'll, I'll water no. bet. I'll water bet Russell Wilson against Trey Lance this week. I think Russ has a good water bet. No. No, Russell. I, dude, I get no. it. I get it. It's funny because Ru- Russ could be on waivers right now. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> well, I'm right because he sucked, <laughs> but he's getting healthier. And I will say this. There no. were a couple of plays. I thought he looked better than we have seen him uh, in the snow. He looked kind of like I saw glimpses of old Russ in that game. You mean young Russ? You sure? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I think I would go. I would go Russ against Detroit. So that means you're Russ over Kyler. I mean, I'm just doing the algebra over here. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! I oh championship I, week. Okay, this I quit. I quit gun. the show. I quit the show. I am done here. Uh, Footland has been a nice ride. What a disgusting <laughs> revelation! Um, <sighs> I'm sorry to do that to you. Yeah, I mean, I I said Kyler, I I I'd, I'd stick with Kyler, okay, and then I'd go I Russ, would. and then I'd go Trey. Like that, I'm the same that 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 order: Kyler, Russ, Trey. Trey could have a nice game and then have negative eight on turnovers. Not a joke. I mean, he could fumble twice and throw two picks, and like there is there is a scary, like I hope for your sake, Mike, because I know that at this point this is you're, this is all you're living for. I mean, yes, you have nothing else to to, to be happy about. Mm-hmm. In this mm-hmm. world, in this moment in time, where you're you'll ascend into the heavens if Trey yeah. Lance delivers a championship, I, I will become light. Will my, it, I my mean, physical will it redeem, body will shed? Will it redeem the the year? Could it uh, redeem the year? No, it will definitely not redeem the year of what could have been. But it it'll feel pretty pretty freaking good. Yeah, <laughs> it would. <laughs> and and he is a legitimate option. And that is now. This is all all. We have these huge discussions, and then Jimmy G is going to play with a broken finger. Yeah, that's. I I would not be surprised at all if Jimmy Graham plays with Jimmy bro- Garoppolo or J- Jimmy Garoppolo plays with a broken finger. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to get Jimmy Graham in ahead of Trey Lance at quarterback. <laughs> I mean, um, now now to be fair, like some nice stuff, like a new nice news blurb came out about Lance uh, Shanahan saying. It's been up and down with Trey Lance this whole entire season, but for about a, a month now, we've had solid practices from him. Wait, is that the San Francisco beat reporters leaking that out? Because <laughs> that means I'm <laughs> out. Oh, baby. I don't believe jack crap that's leaked out from that San was actually Francisco. A, that was a direct quote, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think you could. <laughs> okay. The, uh, I mean, Shanahan is a, is a liar. We do know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, yeah, I mean, the, the fact that scout team success is part of the headline story for Trey Lance tells you you might not have wanted to make this pick. I mean, what? Sure. What could you you could have taken something else at this position. Oh, yeah, 100%. And maybe been in the – I don't know. You could have had a – obviously, he wasn't a difference maker this year, right? You drafted somebody. Right. This was like the Jordan Love pick for the in contention – well, it's even worse. I mean, it's because you traded everything. Like, I don't give a crap if Trey Lance is a good real life NFL quarterback. Uh, I mean, as a Cardinal fan, I hope he's not. But that doesn't matter because I play fantasy. I don't play in the NFL. Yeah. No, I, dude, I get it. Tyler um, Huntley is really the example where a player came in with low expectations and um, and then ended up number one on the week, and that, you know, that could happen. Yeah. So, all right. Final name. I know we're running long, but this is the name I wanted to hear from you two guys because I think, regardless of Trey Lance, fantasy managers are in the championship because of this dude. And I, I feel like he's going to lose people championships. Wow. Get him to the championship and lose because I don't know how you bench him after one of the greatest, most historic uh, performances of all time. Oh, yes. Okay. But Joe Burrow on fire, <laughs> five hundred and four, unbelievable. If you had Joe Burrow, if you're in the championship, like if, if you played him if last, you had week, him last week, yeah, then you are in the championship with Joe Burrow, and I can't imagine benching the guy that got you there. But I think he's going to have a bad game. It's Kansas City Chiefs, who, um, if you go back and look at the the, the last six seven weeks, 
They have basically shut down everyone except for the Chargers game, which I believe they didn't have Chris Jones. Exactly, they were they that was their COVID game where they were missing a couple of real key pieces on defense. Outside of that, I'm playing um, him. You're you're playing him. Okay, Whew. I'm playing. I, I need to hear this. He's Not at me. home. He's at home, and I'm playing him. Is this was this Trey Lance or Joe Burrow? Yes, I'd go Trey Lance. Oh and my goodness! No I way. Would. And no Andy's way. going Burrow. I I feel like you'd have to go Burrow, but I worry, man. I I'm sitting here bringing up like Chiefs are devastating. Ball, the the matchup was perfection for Joe Burrow last week. It's terrible this week. Yeah, man. Yeah, I I would play Joe Burrow. I think I'll be fine. Just just my two cents. So now now all of you out there can make your own decision with the infor <laughs> with the information. But I'm not the weapons that he has. And the, their ability to – the fact that they're not going into Arrowhead, they're playing with, with a berth on the line, I don't know. I, I'm going to stick with Joe. All right. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Well, we want to thank Traeger <laughs> Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. Got to keep that wood-fired flavor coming all year long. My uncle just picked up a Traeger. And um, I haven't seen – like, this was a Christmas uh, Traeger, and this was like a kid – by the tree getting the present like that i've never seen him so excited than when he got his traeger grill smart and, man uh, <laughs> he knew what uh, he was getting <laughs> i'm excited i'm excited for him so uh because i already got mine and i know what it what it's all about mm -hmm. make it a wood-fired winner with traeger go to traeger.com slash footballers that's it that's it <sighs> we, we did, did it. it we did we did we do sort it sort of i mean uh that was a long show Let's let of Al off the hook now. Yeah, Al is Al is uh, need some time to recover. He needs to go so. back to his nest. Mm. That's going to do it for today's show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking with us all season long. Remember, we never ever go away. Let's get that championship. Good luck, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.